I'm Rear Admiral Thomas M. Dykers, retired. It is my pleasure to bring you another true story of the silent service. What you're about to see is an account of the 11th War Patrol of the USS Tenosa, one of nine submarines to penetrate the so-called impregnable Straits of Tsushima, gateway to the Sea of Japan. The overall mission was called Operation Barney, and it shipped the complacency of the Japanese Empire. Compared to the all-out war effort, the action of one group of submarines might seem small. But these were special submarines, equipped with frequency modulated sonar, FMS, a device for underwater detection of enemy mines. They were called the Hellcats. On May 29, 1945, the USS Tenosa headed north from Guam towards the heavily mined Tsushima Straits. Her captain was Commander Richard C. Latham of Waterford, Connecticut. The diving officer was Lieutenant B.S. Weaver of Bartlesville, Oklahoma. The gunnery officer, Lieutenant Charles R. Sanders of Birmingham, Alabama. Captain Latham's executive officer was Lieutenant Commander H.J. Smith of Pottsville, Pennsylvania. Snuffy, if we can pull this one off, it might be the one that does it. Makes them give up. I've got a bigger if. The FMS doesn't work, we'll be blowing clear back to Guam. Admiral Lockwood gave it every test in the book. You remember what he said? Wouldn't lose one boat because of the failure with the FMS. It's our underwater seeing eye dog. Blind man's bluff never was my game. Captain, Mayday coming through. Zoomy going down. Very well, lady. I'll be right there. Good position? Not yet, sir. There was a big raid scheduled on the Japanese mainland. Yeah, we're going to get them coming and going. Got a ditch! Got a ditch! Position, northeast corner, area, option check four. It, northeast corner, area, option four. Anybody radio for a dumb bolt? Yes, sir, someone called a few minutes ago. Hope they made it. About 200 miles due north, right on our course. Keep tuned in on 500 kilocycles. There's a hand crank radio on those rafts. See if you can pick up an SOS. All right, sir. Yes, sir. Helm, all ahead flank. All ahead flank. Aye, aye, sir. The radio message was intercepted by the Tenosa at 1300 on June the 1st. She sped towards the area of the down plane at 19 knots. By 0130, the Tenosa had reached the area and started a checkerboard search. Visibility was limited by a moonless night. Captain, if we make contact on a night like this, it'll be a miracle. Yeah, like looking for a needle in a haystack. We can't hang around much longer. We're liable to be late for rendezvous as it is. I'd hate to leave without giving the best try we can. I'm going to radio comms up back, see what they say. With the coming of dawn, visibility was still limited to 100 yards, this time by a thick fog, but the search was continued as ordered. They would have to gamble on being left behind by the rest of the Hellcats. This is our present position, but in this fog, we're almost sure to miss them. And that's Sofugan. Don't the Japanese have a lookout station there? Yeah, but we're far enough east. We're safe. Barney 3, Barney 3, this is Q-Ball. You read me, over. It's the Dumbo. Q-Ball, this is Barney 3. We read you loud and clear, over. Barney 3, this is Q-Ball. I have you spotted. Visibility is clear up here. The sun is burning the fog off. If we spot the raft, we'll give you a new heading, over. Roger, Q-Ball, we'll be standing by. Out. With contact established between the Tenosa and the search plane, the rescue operation proceeded. Captain, we're getting mighty close to that lookout station. We can always dive. Barney 3, this is Q-Ball, over. Q-Ball, Barney 3, over. Barney 3, contact. Bearing, 330. Repeat, 330. About 20 miles from you. Q-Ball, Barney 3, roger. We are proceeding to position. Over, out. Come left to 330. All ahead, flank. Come left to 330. All ahead, flank. Twenty miles.
miles. That'll put us right on their front porch. Yeah. Want any prayers? The fog was beginning to clear away. It would be easier to see the tiny raft, and easier to be seen by the Japanese lookouts on Sofugan. Tonosa closed the Japanese Hell Island. So far, she hadn't been spotted, but how much longer could her luck hold out? Snobby! They're off the starboard bow. Rescue party on deck! One who feels better at a time like this, the rescued or the rescuer. I know one thing, I'll feel better when we clear that island over there. After the rescue and so Fugan lay many miles away, contact was made with the scabbard fish, which was returning home. A rendezvous was arranged and transfer made. I kind of wish we were going along. All ahead one third, come to course 295. All ahead one third, sir, come to course 295. All ahead standard. All ahead standard, sir. Tenosa plowed towards a rendezvous point a few miles off Nagasaki. It was June the 4th, 1945. In exactly five days at sunset on June the 9th, they would be in the Sea of Japan, if they safely traversed the heavily mined entrance. According to intelligence, there are no mines deeper than 75 feet. They're all anchored using cables. According to intelligence. If they're right, we should be safe at a keel depth of 120 feet. We'll take soundings all the way through. Isn't this the place where some guy says this is it? Only in that western you're reading. Jim! Take her down! Aye, aye, sir. Clear the bridge. Dive, dive. And now the moment was indeed at hand. From this point until she reached the Sea of Japan, Tenosa running submerged would be a silent, stealthy intruder. A battery-driven cruise drove Tenosa forward into the deadly straits of Tsushima. Contact bearing 085, range 350 yards. Steady on course. Steady on course, sir. Contact dead ahead, range 275 yards. Left full rudder. Left full rudder, sir. Contact zero one five, range one hundred seventy five yards. Very well. Contact bearing three one zero, range two hundred yards. Meter, steady as you go. Contact starboard bow, range seventy five yards. Port back emergency. Starboard ahead flank. Left full rudder. Contact port bow. 50 yards. We're between them. Hold stop. Hold stop. Contact 40 yards. 30. 20. Tenosa sweated out the harrowing hours during the traversal of the lattice work of mines. 
Many times it appeared she would not live to reach the Sea of Japan, but the consummate skill of Commander Latham and his crew brought them through. All clear on the screen. Right through the eye of the needle. Let's go up for a look. Periscope, Dad! hours before we can start shooting. When Nelson wanted to disregard his signal, he put his telescope up to his blind eye. What kind of a dodge can we work? Good reason for the orders. The rest of the boats have to get clear of the minefield before we can let them know we're here. I just wish I hadn't seen what I saw. Take her down to 120 feet. 120 feet. Five degree down bubble. Silently, the Tenosa waited for the designated time. June the 9th, firing time was set for 2100. Down scope. 1700. Four hours to go. What's the matter, Captain? There's a sitting duck up there. Looks like an ammunition ship. The rest of the Hellcats must be through the mines by now. They were two hours ago if they made it. Sticking that ship will keep a lot of Japanese guns quiet. Yeah. A clean kill, and they couldn't alert other ships in the area. We can do it. Easy. Up scope. Set torpedo depth, 12 feet. Bearing. Mark, 3, 4, 5. Range. Mark, 3,000 yards. Down scope. We're working a little closer. Sonar contact, get ahead. All back emergency. What do you make it, Sonar? Can't tell, sir, but it sounds like breakers. It's a reef, Captain. Forty-five feet in depth. Very well. We'll try it from here. Up scope. Final observation and shoot. Hang on the bow. Port 20. Bearing. Mark. 335. Range. Mark. 2200. Set. Shoot. Fire one. Fire three. First one's passing ahead. Skyrack hit amidships. Hit him this, the last torpedo won't make any difference. Down score. Take her down to 200 feet. Right full rudder, all ahead one third. All ahead one third. So quickly did the enemy ship sink, it was impossible for a message to have been transmitted. June 16, 1945, Operation Barney was in full swing. Tenosa and her sister ships were giving a good account of themselves. Japanese losses were in tens of thousands of tons. So confident had the Japanese Admiralty been in their impregnability that they allowed their ships to sail unprotected by escorts. It was a fatal mistake. more subs in here, we can clean out what's left of the Japanese merchant marine. 
more time and more torpedoes, we could do it. Got eight left. I'd like to find targets for them. They've really scattered. Looks like we won't. Captain, radar has a contact. Bearing 315. Range 10,000 yards. What about the batteries? Maneuvering room reports. Almost full charge. Very well. Secure the charge. Bring her left to 315. All ahead full. Bring her left. 315. All ahead full. Aye, aye, sir. Now, uh, you were saying, Snuffy, looks like we won't what? Looks like we won't be going home with any fish. Under full power, Tenosa race tarts are unknown targets. Mark, 310. Range? Mark, 2300. Set. Shoot. R1. How are they running, Sonar? Not straight and normal. One of the torpedoes is changing bearing, sir. The second fish, sir. It's a circular run. Heading back. Flood everything. All ahead flank. Take a deep. 15 degrees down bubble. 15 degrees down bubble. Passing 250 feet, Captain. Level off at 300. 300 feet. Aye, aye, sir. Sonar, how are the other two fish tracking? Still on course, sir. I've lost the other two fish, sir. No explosions. It must have been wide of the target. High-speed screws closing fast. She's coming in fast. Rick for depth charge. Right full rudder. Passing overhead. Hang on. Hang on. the man speaking his piece, but that loud mouth hasn't shut up once. Screw's going away. Sounds like his audience lost him. Let's go up for a look around. Periscope depth. Periscope depth, sir. Downscope. Headed for Bolton's territory. Let's see if we can slip under and ahead of him and then wait. Maybe we can teach him some manners. Come to course 295. Course 295, sir. To guarantee maximum efficiency in the attack, the Sea of Japan was divided into areas. Each submarine in Operation Barney having her own section. Taking periodic checks on the target through the periscope and tracking it on the radar screen. The Tenosa chased after her quarry. After several hours, she was on the extreme perimeter of her area and in position for attack. The destroyer had mysteriously disappeared, but a ship she was apparently escorting steamed on unaware of the danger that lay before her. While Tenosa lay still in the water, the target steered a steady course. Shoot! Fire three. Fire four. Right on the nose. That one did it. We wasted two. A direct hit sent the enemy ship straight to the bottom. 
Nothing remained, only an oil slick to show where she'd gone down. Twilight of June 20th, 1945. With Operation Barney drawing to a close, Tenosa eagerly searched for one last target. Everybody's run for cover. You mean we got to go home with two fish? Uh, still a few hours left before rendezvous time. Maybe something will turn up. Surface! With only three hours left, Tenosa had more than proven her worth to Operation Barney. All concerned would have preferred to return with empty torpedo tubes, but there was nothing to shoot at. Tenosa headed for the rendezvous and home. How are we doing for time, Snubby? Should be there in half an hour. I wonder if everybody made it. Sound contact, dead ahead. Up scope! Probably one of our subs. Down scope! Uh-uh! Customer? A nice fat one right in our lap. Keep your fingers crossed. Every few minutes, a quick sighting, enough time to check. But not long enough to be spotted by a lookout. Down scope! Bingo, Snuff. Let's go home. Come left to 290. Left to 290. Aye, aye, sir. Let's go home. Operation Barney was secured. Tenosa's contribution, over 12,000 tons of enemy shipping destroyed. I'll be back in a moment with our special guest. On June 24th, 1945, with the loss of only one submarine, the Bonefish, Operation Barney was secured. Its bold daring is testimony to the crews and officers who manned the nine participating submarines. And now I'd like you to meet Captain Richard C. Latham, who was the skipper of the Tenosa. Dick, I want to personally thank you for your help in preparing this film. It was a pleasure, and all of us who were in the Tenosa appreciate your having chosen our ship and telling the story of Operation Barney. We all know that a mission like this one takes the combined efforts of hundreds of men. Tell us, is there any one thing about the mission that stands out in your mind above all others? Well, that would be a little difficult. There were many outstanding happenings, but there is one thing that has bothered me all these years. What's that? One day, just after we had submerged, we had been up to shoot the sun for our noon position, we heard a large plane fly overhead. Our radio picked up a message loud and clear in perfect English. The voice said, hello, fellow, this is Flight 7. I have a message for you. Who was it? I never found out. None of our planes were supposed to be in the area, and I couldn't see any in the periscope. You didn't surface to find out what kind of a plane it was. I did not. <laughs> Maybe that's why you're here to tell us about it. You're probably right. I want to congratulate you on the fine part Tenosa played in an operation that helped a great deal to break the back of enemy resistance. Thank you, Tommy. Be with us again when we bring you another true story of the silent service.